So now we see the overview of the morphological structures of female reproductive system. And we also saw the journey of an ovum or egg from the ovary to the through the fallopian tube into the uterus. Now we will see the exact process of how a female reproductive system produces an ovum. So that's the process known as oogenesis. And the first thing that we know, and I told you earlier that inside the ovary, the all process take place. And inside the ovary, there is this mother egg cell known as oogonium with 2n number of chromosomes, which is known as a diploid cell. So this diploid cell or oogonium that is present inside the ovary is now slowly start to mature. How exactly they will mature? So the first thing that I know is this oogonium is present before the birth of the child even, right? So this oogonium that are present is in the fetus. So the fetal development, if you look at the fetal ovary, you'll find oogonium. Oogonium is present in the fetal ovary. And this oogonium start the mitosis division and they are going to produce so many different versions of this oogonium and all the mother cells and the total number of mother cells which are present is fixed after the birth those cells will not divide further so it's actually the fetal development which matters regarding the production of the mother egg cell so <clears throat> let's say 1 million mother egg cell or oogonium is present during the fetal development and then the birth happens so after the birth the total number of oogonium remains 1 million. It will not increase in number. It will decrease because most of this oogonium will now convert into another slowly uh, matured version of, of an egg uh, or, or prema premature egg cell known as a primary uh, oocyte but we'll talk about that later. So the oogonium whatever number is present before birth remains as it is even after the birth. So what happens is oogonium slowly start to mature and what it produces is primary spermatocyte. How? Because the oogonium start to undergo meiosis division. Now once it start to undergo the meiosis division, remember, meiosis 1 and actually they, this cell cycle is arrested at the prophase 1 of the meiosis 1 division and they are arrested at this division and all this all the cells that are produced there are known as primary oocyte. So the primary oocyte that is produced is arrested at prophase 1 of the meiotic division. Now this primary oocyte is not present inside the ovary directly because this primary oocyte will be covered by some muscular layer and this covering is known as granulosa. So once the primary oocytes are covered with granulosa layer, it is known as primary follicle. So what is a follicle? A follicle is when you have a oocyte covered by granulosa layer. <clears throat> so this is one type of layer. We call them theca. Okay? Theca means a layer of tissues surrounding the oocyte. So primary oocyte covered by granulosa is known as primary follicle. So primary follicle remain as it is and they are arrested in the prophase 1. That is the structure. That's how it, they are present throughout of the time. So from the birth till the puberty, the total number of this primary oocyte, whatever we know, the total number of primary oocyte, they are decreasing in number because they degenerate in number. So what happens? The primary o, the, the oogonium that was present there was 1 million, for example, and they are actually present couple million. Then slowly they turn into primary oocyte from the birth till puberty the total number of this mother egg cell decreased to 60,000 to 80,000 only so huge number of cells start to die and degenerate no cells are further formed so primary oocyte is produced so once the primary oocyte is produced then what will happen to this primary oocyte this primary oocyte will then once they hit the puberty the specific age where uh, other hormones like estrogen start to take care of all the characteristics, sexual characteristics of female, then it will allow this primary oocyte to resume the meiosis cell division. And then what will happen? Primary oocyte divides into two types of cell. One type of cell is known as secondary oocyte. Another cell is polar body. First polar body. 
Now this division is not even because you know in cell division there are two situations. One is the separation of chromosomes and the second is the division of cytoplasm. The division and separation of cytoplasm is uneven. So the secondary oocytes are going to get more cytosol, polar body is going to receive less cytosol. So what will happen? Polar body becomes a very tiny cell with less cytosol inside and a nucleus. While the secondary oocytes are bigger with nucleus and large content of cytosol. Now what will happen? At this particular stage, the secondary oocyte will undergo second route of meiosis or meiosis 2. After meiosis 2, what it will do? It will produce four, again another set of divisions because the polar body will not divide because they are not going to be beneficial in any kind. So the secondary oocyte is going to produce uh, what we know as <coughs> second polar body and the ovum. The ovum is the mature female gamete or egg. This is the mature egg that we are talking about. Now remember one simple thing. While they produce the primary follicle, that's not the enough. Because while primary follicle, you know, the primary oocyte is developing inside the primary follicle. So what happens? Primary follicle slowly start to have another layer of granulosa and they'll produce secondary follicle. Then the secondary follicle cover contains a third layer that then they call the follicle as a tertiary uh, follicle. So this tertiary follicle that is produced, three separate layers. Now mainly these two outermost and innermost layers are known as externa and interna. The outermost layer is externa, innermost layer is interna. That's what happens in tertiary follicle. Where the tertiary follicle is little unique because they not only have three separate layers but they also have a fluid filled cavity inside known as the antrum. And why we need this antrum? Because this antrum provides the nutrients uh, for the growth of the cells. So the antrums are produced in the tertiary follicle. Then only the division of the primary oocyte takes place into the secondary oocyte. And once they produce the secondary oocyte and maturing to make the ovum, this layer of tissue start to increase so the tertiary follicle is going to mature and another layer of tissue known as the external theca start to become really really broad and then they will produce what is known as a graphene follicle which is the most mature form of the follicle and graphene follicle is the structure where the conversion of secondary oocyte into the ovum takes place so once ovum is produced the ovum becomes a part of graphene follicle. So once ovum becomes a part of graphene follicle, now what we know graphene follicle can release the ovum outside into the environment. Uh, environment means in this case obviously uh, definitely it will be released and it will interact with the infundibulum through which it can take its journey through the fallopian tube inside uh, the uterus. That's what is going to happen at the end. So this is a sequence of events that take place inside the ovary. So if you look at this, this is a primary egg cell or oogonium. Then slowly, what I can say, the primary spermatocytes, which will be really smaller, then secondary spermatocyte, two separate layer, tertiary spermatocyte, and then finally, uh, sorry, not spermatocyte, all of them should be oocyte. So primary oogonium, then primary oocyte, secondary oocyte, tertiary oocyte, and then ultimately the graphene follicle. And once the ovum is produced inside the graphene follicle, then the ovum will be released by rupturing. So it will be delivered outside. That's how the egg is delivered outside. So this scenario takes place inside both the ovaries at the same time. Okay. And once this ovum is released, then ovum will take its journey. And as I told you, the fertilization will take place inside the fallopian tube. And after the fertilization, the zygote will be formed and the zygote will, will, will be in embedded to the endometrium and this is known as the implantation and this zygote start to grow in anchored there in the endometrium. Slowly the cells start to divide and as the cells start to divide the cells, so the only one cell, every single individual that you see nowadays, every single of us, we are all made from one particular cell that is the zygote. 2n number of chromosome containing cell, a large cell though, that cell start dividing and produce a whole adult organism. Now the division they undergo after uh, the, the fertilization, it's all mitosis cell division. But the division pattern is little different and by that way and the cell growth, the organism start to grow. Now <clears throat> the interesting fact is this whole process of oogenesis begins with the primary oocyte, uh, the oogonium and the primary oocyte 
this part is unique that the first meiotic division prophase 1 is a is, is a till prophase 1 the primary oocyte is restricted and then the rest of the process takes place once the girl reach a puberty unless it's not but another interesting thing is this primary oogonium and this number of primary oogonium slowly start to decrease from the birth till uh, the puberty that's a unique feature about the female reproductive system which is not present in case of male reproductive system so that's the process of how females prepare and produce the ovum and we've already seen how the male produces sperm and then the sperm will fertilize the ovum and the implantation will take place so this later part of the modification we'll talk about it with animations in the next round of the class will you talk about how exactly the fertilization takes place and once after the fertilization how exactly the growth of the embryo takes place we call it the embryogenesis or development of embryo so stay tuned and watch the series of videos